Many of you have asked me how I maintain the consistency of my character throughout my whole animated stories, so today I will be covering this in this tutorial. So before we start, I wanted to briefly mention this first method called the clarinet's puppet methods, which basically was the first method I used in the beginning, and it does still work well. I'm not going to go too much into detail with this method, but as you can see, here is the template to follow. First, we have the image link of our character followed by setting is. So here just add the location. Then we have name is, so here just add your character's name and briefly physically describe him or her. At last, we have setting contains name, which is the name of our character doing activity, which is where you add the action you want your character to do. Then add the atmosphere, filler, etc. And we have an example right underneath here. I'll put the link in the comments section if you want to have a look. We won't need it for this tutorial. So the first step of our method consists in first generating an avatar description with chat GPT. So ideally by now, your story is ready to go and you have all your characters listed. Let's say that we wanted to make a story about a dancer named Jason. What we are going to do is to ask chat GPT to physically describe a male dancer for my upcoming story. His name is Jason. It will give you quite some text, but we don't need this huge text. So we're going to ask, give me a shorter version. Here is what it returned to us. Jason is a tall and lean male dancer with a chiseled physique, sharp features, piercing blue eyes, and dark hair styled in a slick manner. And this is only what we need. So we're going to copy just that first part and head over to our Midjourney account. Once here, just paste it as a prompt, but we're going to add the word portrait of, and this is what it generated for us. I really like number two. So I upscaled it, and now let's save it. Click on the picture, open in browser, right click, save image as, and save it. I've already done that, so I'm going to skip this time, but you would want to click save and then go back. Now here there is this background, and we don't want that because later it sometimes interferes with our images, so we will remove it. I use Canva, but any background removal software will do. Once you import your image to Canva, click edit image and then background remover. I've already done it, so if you had to do it, just go ahead and download the image. Make sure that transparent background is ticked. Quick note, sometimes it's best to crop to only the head, as sometimes the rest of the body gets incorporated into our generated images. You will soon see what I mean, but I will leave it as it is here. Now let's head back to Midjourney and let's import our new image. Click this plus button, upload a file and we're going to choose our picture. Click open and the picture will be generated. Now here's where it becomes interesting. So the way I approached this in my latest animated story was instead of focusing on my character and trying to fit him in different settings like in the clarinet puppet method, I focus first on creating scenes that already include a random character who physically looks like my character doing my desired action. Then later focused on matching my character face with this random person's body. It might be a bit confusing for now so let me show you, it will make sense in a moment. So let's say that in our script, the opening scene of our story introduces our dancer Jason dancing in the club. I don't have any specific requirements, just that it has to be Jason dancing in a club. So I went ahead and wrote this prompt, wide full body image, then used our chat GPT description, lean male dancer with a chiseled physique, sharp features, piercing blue eyes, and dark hair styled in a slick manner. Sometimes I add the name of my character at the end of the description to teach Midjourney to start associating the name with my character, but this time I didn't. I then added my desired action, which is dancing on the dance floor, followed by the location in a club full of people. Aspect ratio 3 by 2. So here's the result, but as you can see, our Jason is topless, which is not what we want. Not at this time, anyway. <laughs> yeah, boy. So we can re-roll, but this time I decided to add in my prompt wearing fashion clothes, still dancing on the dance floor, followed by my desired style. If you wish to add your desired style like an artist's name or a specific texture, feel free to do so, but make sure to integrate it into most of your future prompts to keep the style consistent throughout your story. Now here are the newly generated images. It's similar, but in some, we have some clothes. Still not what I'm looking for, but I liked an upscaled number one to use it as a live demo later on. So I decided to be more precise in my prompt because I didn't want a topless Jason. I went ahead and replaced wearing fashion clothes with wearing a black shirt, 
jeans, and shoes. And as you can see, I really like number three. This one is already pretty close to our Jason. So I upscaled it and decide to re-roll just to give us something else to work with so that I can show you the step process with a different picture. Here I really like number four, and it doesn't quite look like our Jason, so it's perfect for our demo. I upscaled it and re-rolled again to give us something else to work with. You don't need to re-roll, but I like to have multiple options. Like in many movies, many scenes don't make the final cut, but at least it's good to have many options to choose from. So right here as well, I really like number two. So let's upscale that one too. While all our latest images are being upscaled, here's our first generated image. We haven't done anything yet and it's already looking good. I personally would be happy with this and would go ahead and save it as we normally do. Open in browser, right click and save as. Now this is where our technique comes into play. As you can see, the face is quite different from our JSON. So how do we replace it? Step one, collect our image link. Click the image, right click, copy image address. Then head over to start a new prompt. Imagine prompt, paste our image link. Step two, collect our JSON face link. Same thing as step one, click the image of your character. Right click, copy image address. Then head over to the already started prompt and paste it next to the first link. No need for a comma. Step three, add the prompt from our original image. We're going to copy our prompt right here, copy, and we're going to paste it next to the two links that we already pasted and hit enter. I've done it already. And this is what came up. So as we can see, this is pretty good and quite close to our original image. Remember, I'm not trying to be too specific. The main idea is to have Jason dancing in the club. Also here, we have our long links shortened. The first link is our reference image and the second link are Jason's face. So before we move to a live example, here is a quick recap. One, we asked ChatGPT to physically describe our Jason. We shortened the long version and took only the part describing Jason's physique. Two, we generated Jason's portrait in Midjourney, upscaled our chosen one, and removed its background. Once done, we imported our new image back into Midjourney. Three, we generated an image of our ideal scene by using our chat GPT short description and combined it with an action, a location, and a style. Four, we saved the images that were already looking accurate in our example just one. And if we liked one that wasn't so accurate, we upscaled it, copy and pasted its link in a new prompt copied and pasted our character image link next to our first image link, followed by our scene prompt. This is how our prompt looks like. Image link one plus image link two equals image three. Okay, so now back to our results. Picture number three is the one that stands out the most for me in terms of how accurate it looks to our JSON, so I upscaled it. Quick note, to make it easier for us, let's save our JSON's face shortened link into a notepad page. We're going to call it Jason's face and paste our link. Now you can see this minor detail on his chin that isn't representative of our Jason. So I decided to make some variations by clicking make variations and it was much better. We now have four accurate images that represent our Jason dancing on the dance floor in the middle of the club. Now let's quickly do a live example with the other images we upscaled earlier. Let's use this one. Same process, click the image, right click, copy image address, imagine prompt followed by a reference image link. Then we're going to copy and paste our Jason's face link that we saved a moment ago and add next to both links, our prompt that contains the description, settings, etc. Hit enter. As you can see, despite our prompt, our Jason is topless and this is due to not cropping our image to just the face. It's a bit special. Also, there is some similarity, but it's not exactly a match to what we want. So we're going to re-roll it and see what we can come up with different. Sometimes that will be the process. The re-roll button will have to be your best friend. So here we will re-roll again as it's still not what we want. We want to be accurate with our character, but not so accurate with our desired scenery. Our image is now ready. Image number four is quite close to our character. I really like it, so we will upscale this. I think that we can work with it. 
While our image is being generated, let's start working on the other image we upscaled a while back. Click the image. Right-click. Copy image address. Imagine prompt followed by our reference image link. Copy and paste our JSON's face link that we saved, and let's add next above links the rest of our prompt. Hit enter. You can already see that we are getting a good representation of our reference image. Okay, now we have our upscaled image ready, and it's quite representative of our JSON with our original image. I would go ahead and save it. Now coming back to this one, you can see that number one stands out, and maybe number four too. We could re-roll one more time, or we could upscale them, and separately try them as new image references. We would then paste our JSON's face link image followed by our prompt. Now let's say that we wanted to work with a new scene. Our JSON is reading a book in the library, for example. We would write, imagine prompt wide full body image, followed by our chat GPT description, lean male dancer with a chiseled physique, sharp features, piercing blue eyes, and dark hair styled in a slick manner, wearing a black shirt, reading a book in the library, super sleek, and our aspect ratio. Let's see. So now this is what we got, and you can already see that the face and hair features of number one, two, and three are similar to our Jason. You can also see that image two has the open shirt and chest visible again, which I believe is due to not cropping closer our Jason's face earlier. So Midjourney is still giving us that option, but we won't use it. Having said all that, image four is what I want. So we're going to upscale that. Here we now have our image. Now let's apply the steps used previously. Click the image. Right click. Copy image address. Imagine prompt followed by our reference image link. Copy and paste our JSON's face link and next above links add the rest of our prompt. Hit enter. Now something that I want to add while our image is being generated is that when you start adding and combining your prompt with different views and angle shots like low angle view, high angle view, medium shot, long shot, etc., it helps in making your movie stand out by diversifying and giving more than one perspective from the traditional normal view, if that makes sense. Also when applying this technique, if you need a back shot, make sure to remove any description about eyes or face from your prompt. It's usually a 50-50 result if you leave this detail. Finally, instead of generating images from Midjourney for your image reference, you can use real-life images too. For example, in my latest video, I used this Doctor Strange scene as a reference to create this kind of out-of-body image and then applied our technique to integrate our character. I then made sure to add in my prompt the action I wanted my character to do or experience by writing out-of-body experience to really help Midjourney understand where I wanted. I later added some editing to bring it to life. You can also do this if you want a specific location from any images. Just import it in Midjourney and add the link next to the other links in your prompt. So now your prompt would have your first image reference link, followed by your character face link, and then your location image link. Now, let's go back to our results. So here, number four stands out quite well, but let's give it a re-roll one more time and see if we can get something even better. Look at this. These are really close to our character. Now, because it's mid-journey, not every picture will be identical, but it will give you at least a 90 to 95% success rate in maintaining your character. Here we could always re-roll if we wanted to get an even closer match and see what mid-journey can give us. Or we could apply the step previously mentioned where you would just upscale the closest image to your character and use that new upscaled image link as the new reference image, then add our JSON image link and our prompt. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you would like to hire me to work on your story, email me and let's see what can be done. The next tutorial will be on how to come up with great story ideas that you can combine with ChatGPT, and I will also have a few more on the way I edit and animate my images, so stay tuned for that. So yeah.
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.